Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for episode 45 of Caspi Road to Exploration. And today we start with a launch, a, fa a fairly uh, standard one, just launching a fueling vehicle to the space station. This is obviously the Ares 3, atop the Pulsar X, I want to say. <laughs> uh, yeah, and um, it's just taking a big load of fuel up to the space station because we need it for our various missions, mostly the big Taurus mission we took on, which, you know, not the most exciting of missions, but incredibly well paying and really good for just exploring more of um, our moons, really, because there is still a lot of be, uh, science to be done there. There's a lot of little biomes on the moon you don't really think about. Um, and we're going to go to one of them today, but we are going to need some fuel for that. So we're just going to launch this fairly standardly, very efficiently. Everything obviously reusable as um, as it always w is when I build it. Um, I, build, I, I build the best rockets. We, we got the best rockets. China, they don't have the best. I've really got to stop doing that, saying so many... Uh, I, he, it, he's in my head. I've been watching the presidential um, uh, debate. That's... Mm-hmm. That happened. Anyway, <laughs> let's not talk about that. Let's think about the happiness that is KSP. Um, so we're going to ditch this rocket um, once we're in orbit and then get into a higher orbit and then move on to the space station. Um, yes, yeah, so I've actually taken a couple of the RCS thrusters off... Uh, four of the One of the rings of RCS thrusters off this fueling spacecraft because it's... Um, well, because it, it, it was too much. There was too much kind of thrust and flickering around, and I didn't really want it. So I took away a couple, and now it's a much better vehicle. Um, so yeah, it's all about yeah, incremental improvements. But anyway, after lots of maneuvering in, and you saw I got my close encounter, we're going to dock to this bottom node on the space station that is the liquid fuel container. I should, uh, I will at some point just need to bring up more liquid fuel, because... Since I'm only really launching liquid fuel and oxidizer, and I've been using the um, nuclear-powered Ares 4... Um, I actually need some more liquid fuel to balance out the levels. Uh, so it actually means I can get kind of more fuel up here more efficient, uh, more efficiently, really. So yeah, let's just uh, dock this on there. Of course, haven't uh, decoupled the fairing for the fueling thing because I just don't need to. And then we need to land the rocket because obviously it's a very expensive piece of kit and we land it just over these mountains rather nicely, not on the mountains like that fueling spacecraft last time. Um, but yeah, we'll just touch it down on the ground. This can, of course, land on ground because it is using engines. It would be nice if I had some landing links. But anyway, you may remember from a very long time ago, actually 300 days of in-game time ago, we launched a mining spacecraft to Minmus to complete a mission, and it is finally done. I didn't put any radiators on this, so those drills were operating at 7%. We've taken away all of the um, ore from this little patch of ground, put it in those tanks, and now we have to leave. And you could see there how low the thrust to weight ratio on this is because I kind of didn't think about it so much. Uh, but yes, we have loaded up with ore and we need to take it back to Kerbin. This mission was probably like 10 episodes ago. You can see in the top left it 307 days. I have been checking on it frequently, uh, but it's just taken so long. I do want to get some mining operations set up, possibly on Minmus, maybe on the moon, definitely on Duna at some point. Um, but obviously I will include radiators so we don't have to wait 300 days um, to get 450 units of ore. And obviously I'll be using bigger drills and um, I, uh, uh, ISRUs. But yes, this was the first test and I didn't really want to launch anything else until after this was done because it felt like yeah, I should get this done and then we can start with our mining operations. Um, but yes, uh, so with the tiny thrust to weight ratio, we do manage to get into orbit because luckily it is Minmus where the... Um, where the orbital, where the gravity is so low, and you can see I've still got quite a bit of delta V left, more than enough to get home. I was really worried about that actually when I built the spacecraft. I wasn't quite sure if it would. But get it appears home. I have more than enough delta V, and uh, yeah. So after a little bit of planning and then deleting those maneuvers, because those tend to take a little while, so you know. Um, and you can see that when I do plan these in these maneuvers, it puts me on this massive inclination because Minmus is kind of a bitch. So I'm just gonna burn, leave, um, you know, head on home. Um, but yes, I was actually thinking I might have to send a rescue mission for this, but totally not. Uh, yeah, um, I actually took this on so long ago when I was in my space program was in dire straits and I needed money, and I was like, let's make some quick cash with this mining operation. And 300 days later, when we were in a great position, yeah, uh, just no, <laughs> I get my money finally. But hey, 200 grand, 200 grand, you know, that's it's good money. Um, and yeah, it's it's pretty good. Uh, we're just gonna go back to Kerbin and uh, deliver this payload. Um, some weird things happen with this payload. This mission does not get simpler. Um, but anyway, since we're in the nice ring of, uh, I, I count the outer ring as kind of my definite gonna have communications with the short range antenna. I close that antenna. I know most of this stuff's gonna break off in the atmosphere, but that's fine. 
and we fall beautifully towards Kerbin. I fire up the engine a little to try and slow myself down, but it seems like it's lowering my parry up too much, so I'm not going to bother. The atmosphere will do the job. Now, we're going to enter the atmosphere right now, and everything's going to blow off, and we're actually going down to a periapsis of 28 uh, kilometers, which usually would be more than enough to slow me down. Just lost the big antenna there. It's fine. We still have the small antenna, um, the resistant one. But because, I think it's because the ore tanks are so dense, they're just so freaking dense, um, that, that it just flies right through the atmosphere because there just isn't enough force on this amount of mass because it should have a bigger heat shield, really, because that would provide a bigger aerodynamic force. But it's just so heavy and so dense that it just doesn't slow down. So we're just going to go around again, and that's fine. Um, and you can see I'm entering here again. And the, the ablator has burned off quite significantly, but we're coming in much more slowly this time. Um, and yeah, so we just got to, it's just a matter of kind of holding position because it won't really, it's not really aerodynamically stable anyway because it's so dense and so heavy and just ridiculous. I, 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 I never realized this. I think I have heard about the density of it before. Anyway, so my actual goal isn't to recover this, it's to land it and have it stable for 10 seconds. So I was hoping, I was a little worried about the ocean um, and if it would be technically landed in the ocean, but I don't, but there's a bigger problem than that. You can see I did manage to just pull my shoots in time, which was really lucky because I really thought I wasn't gonna be able to, and that was really worrying. But as you can see, when it hit the ocean, it just dropped. It just started falling through the ocean. And so, yeah, my initial thought was, fuck. And then my second thought was, wait a minute, Firstly, bunch of world firsts for going deep into the ocean, and secondly, there's an ocean floor. I bet it counts if I land on the ocean floor. So yeah, it's so dense it doesn't even float. Um, so I should build some submarines, really. Uh, but yeah, so we land it on the ocean floor, and we finally, after waiting 10 seconds, complete our mission, get our 200 grand, and that's done. I just so wasn't expecting that it would just sink like that. But yeah, we recover it anyway, get about 3 grand back. Pretty pointless, but that's fine. And then we upgrade our tracking station because we need to start capturing asteroids I think I think that will be a really fun little thing to do and I haven't done it yet and um, there's so much to do in KSP now especially with all the mods I've added that's why this series has been so long so far and probably will continue for so long is because <laughs> there's just so much to do so yeah now we're gonna like start looking for some uh, for some um, asteroids and we found a size E a really gigantic one which is going to encounter Kerbin quite soon and then a nice size C which might be a little more manage manageable none of them seem to hit Kerbin so that's good I don't have to direct any not that you really have to but you know a little bit of fun but yeah maybe we'll look into that in a little bit I do have the grabber arm now I think but yeah anyway so on the station after deliver delivering that fuel we fueled up the Thor one and we're gonna head out to the moon with a couple of tourists um, because, well, the tourists really want to go to the moon, and we really want their money. So we're just leaving right now, um, as you can see, uh, just sort of do a standard thing. We'll cut through the burn, because it takes so it takes quite a while with the spacecraft. And you've probably, if you've watched this series at all, seen a lot of going to the moon, because it is one of my favorite spots to go, except for Duna, of course. Or Lathe. I think Lathe is probably my favorite place in the Kerbal Solar System. But that seems so kind of... Everyone loves Lathe. It's the around jewel. It's got an atmosphere. It's got air and water. I don't know. I, I do have a soft spot for Elu. I, I like Elu. Maybe I should go there. Uh, well, that would be a very long journey. But maybe as this series kind of speeds up in game time. Um, this uh, episode actually has a lot of kind of um, doing things close together. So we don't advance time that much. But, you know, we will be at some point. So anyway, we're in orbit of the moon right now. And I'm not just taking tourists. I also have a mission, firstly, to plant a flag. And another mission... Um, surprisingly enough to not another mission i'm i just realized actually that i'm in the right place to land in the twin craters the twin craters are a great, great little bit they've got a nice canyon between them there's two craters and mostly i haven't landed there yet in this series which i've realized it's another biome which i've missed there's quite a lot of biomes i haven't got but that's mostly what the moon base is for really but yeah i thought i'd go and land in here and grab some science and you know see what happens so we're gonna go land down here in one of the craters within the craters and it actually looks like there's a crater within a crater within the crater, which is pretty cool. That's that's craterception times three, two. Shut up. Um, <laughs> anyway, so we're coming down, and it's all looking good, and I'm trying to balance my speed. Um, but when I actually land, 
I hit a little too hard, flip over, smash a solar panel. I'm like, oh god damn it, Jeb, all your fault. And we do we have completed a few missions with the tourists, um, but yeah, we are in the twin craters, and it's easy to write this. You just uh, retract your landing legs, pull yourself up, and then throw the landing legs out. But annoyingly, one of the landing legs explodes, which totally sucks. Um, so it's fine, it can hold its position with the torque and the RCS if it really needs to. So I'm just going to carry on with the mission, fix this another time, and we, yeah, it'll be fine for now, but we will have to fix it before other missions. And then we need, also need to plant the flag for the mission, and if you watch real close, you'll see the leg flip up as it falls over. I didn't see that. And um, after completing that mission, getting 70 grand, I'm like, what the fuck happened here? And it turns out that the um, spacecraft didn't like standing up, it wanted a bit of a lie down. Anyway, yeah, so we got... Um, our 70 grand for that flag, we just need to flip this up again, put it on its three landing legs, and uh, leave it here until um, the orbiter comes back around. So yeah, we're just gonna do a bit of time warping. At some point, um, I will have to send up a new landing leg and new solar panel for this spacecraft uh, before I send it out on another mission. Luckily, I've got a few more things I've got to send to the moon, really, before I um, do another mission to the base. So it's not massively essential. And in for things we do need to do, we have the Red Origin 3, the two-man version of this spacecraft, effectively. So that's fine. Um, and it was a little bit of fun. I don't know if we're going to be sending Jeb to Duna now. He's seriously damaged one of our spacecraft. I've never had that happen before, but it just overstressed the landing gear. And we, uh, yeah, really, really messed that up. <laughs> Lots of drama uh, on this mission. I'm sure the tourists are very happy that we lost a leg and almost killed them. God damn it, Jeb. Get your shit together. I think he's uh, been a bit rusty being on the moon. Maybe he likes the moon so much he was trying to strand himself there so he could go back to the base. Because, I mean, they do have a lot of snacks there. Um, but, yeah. Anyway, bored, uh, after uh, grabbing the science data and getting to the Thor 1... Um, which apparently is just called Thor 1, but it's a Th Thor 1 fuel tank. We dock on, and we're going to get ready to go. So we've planned the maneuver, um, it's going to be all good, and we're going to head back to the station, as we have done many a time, but usually with a little more spacecraft than we currently have. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure the uh, officials on the ground are, are, are planning uh, something awful for when Jeb gets back from the station. I think he may stay in space for a while, just to avoid the embarrassment of his, um, of his, of his colleagues. <laughs> well, Jeb's a badass. He can do what he wants. He doesn't need landing legs. Maybe he was just thinking that landing on four landing legs was too easy, you know? It's like, God, jeez, give me a challenge, guys. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, let's get down here. Get back to the station where I can leave this to repair it. Um, but, yeah, pretty successful. All we have to do now is fly one of those Taurus past... Um, uh, Minmus, and then we're done, and we can send them home along with a bunch of other things, and we'll complete a bunch of missions, get a lot of money, I think somewhere in the uh, neighborhood of 250 grand, plus about 50 grand that we've already earned for when we uh, complete one of their kind of sub-objectives, and then give us about five to seven grand, um, as we got on the way there, so on the surface of the moon. So yeah, very profitable. Um, obviously, uh, there were a few hiccups, I mean, one of the fueling rockets didn't land, which kind of sucked, uh, but that that's fine, you know, these are just costs that you got to take into account. Um, but yeah, I'm just getting my close encounter with the station, as I would usually do, and there we go, pretty nice. And then after maneuvering in, which you've seen many a time, we will dock onto the station, and uh, there we go, back on Hermes. Rather nice, looking rather beautiful. Gonna get Jeb out, just uh, store all of these experiments in... Um, the Ares 3 uh, for when we go back because we definitely need to be doing that um, but at some point we may we just gonna not leave these experiments in orbit I may throw some of them in the lab but most of them will be taken home and we'll just put Jeb in one of these um, modules uh, but yeah that is all good uh, but now we have another mission with the Red Origin 2 because Thor is broken and uh, we're gonna send it out to Minmus completing this tourism mission. Yes, I thought I would definitely complete this episode so a large bulk of this is just these missions but we gotta do them, we gotta make money so we can build that Duna spacecraft which, yeah, I think I do really wanna get on that uh, way before I go to Duna so I can check everything, maybe do a test mission to Minmus. Um, I think it's, yeah, I've got a lot of plans for it. It's not just going to be a small mission, you know. I'm going to, because it's been so long, I think I'm totally prepared to do a massive, full-on mission. Basically, uh, Dune is going to be two parts. Um, okay, I did a quick quick load there to get rid of some of the texture glitching. Uh, but yeah, Dune is going to be two, uh, the mission is going to be two parts. The first mission to go down there, I've explained this before, but yeah, we're going to go down there, lay down the kind of initial groundwork, and then a second mission, which will fully set up a full-on, always supporting base um, with, uh, you know, farms and shit. And all of that stuff, so that we could stay there indefinitely if we need to. Um, 
So yeah, the first mission will be pretty big. I may even bring a plane. We're going to explore Ike because I still have that mission. And yeah, I think it's going to be uh, pretty awesome. Um, and to be, uh, a few people have asked me to build a, a Duna space station. The transfer vehicle will be like a Duna space station, effectively. And there may even be two transfer. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, that is quite a far in the future, but I do want to get on top of it because it is going to be a big mission. There is a reason why I'm saving a lot of money because it's going to be pretty big. Uh, but anyway, while that's on its way to Minmus, we have a launch we need to do with our Starlight One, our new beautiful, amazing rocket, which is replacing some of the older pulsars because they are really an aging fleet, um, and we need to replace this for more efficiency and awesome. And yeah, this is sending another probe to Moho. I've been to Moho lots, mostly because the transfer window comes around very frequently. Um, and this isn't another lander. This is just an orbiter because we didn't complete both of the orbital missions last time we went there. So I'm just sending another one down there. It's much smaller, so it can launch on top of one of uh, these rockets. The second stage of this uh, rocket isn't set up for reusability, because this is going to take it all the way to... Um, well, it's going to get my encounter with uh, Moho, and then yeah, then the probe has an arc jet thruster to do the rest of the maneuvering, and then a small liquid fuel noxidizer payload um, to you know do all of its maneuvers around Moho. We almost get hit by a bit of debris there, which was rather terrifying, but it would have been awesome. And then, no, uh, after a lot of shaking, because I used a bicoupler and didn't strut it correctly, uh, we eventually get into orbit, and then um, we need to go and grab that uh, first stage, of course, which is going to land really far from the KSC, because this is such a light payload that it just kind of blasted off and this lands fine we only get about 80 percent of the money back because it's so far from the KSC. but that's fine anyway after planning my after after planning my maneuver to moho and after planning my maneuver to moho uh, it's time to go and um i'm not gonna be able to do this at full thrust because as you saw there was a lot of shaking because this isn't properly fastened down um, because i'm great at my job and you can see it shakes like hell there so i'm gonna do a uh, burn a little early at about half thrust and that should uh, solve the problem. But yeah, we're going to have more than enough uh, fuel. You can see we've got... <laughs> I tried doing without SAS. That did not help. Um, you can see we've got um, uh, 2,000 meters per second of delta V in this stage, which will do the exit burn and some of the inclination change down near Moho, and then 7,000 meters per second of delta V in the arc jet thrusters, which will basically allow me to do, just do anything around Moho. Um, I didn't put any scientific equipment on this pro. <laughs> Fuck, that's why it was so easy. I'm just watching this back. Oh, god damn it. Yeah, okay. Yep. 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 There's no scientific equipment on the probe. <laughs> oh my god, I suck at my job. Oh. <laughs> I was like, this is surprisingly easy. Why did I have so much trouble before? Oh my god. I'm so dumb. Okay, so what this is, is it's setting up communications networks around Moho. Um, that was its job from the start. It's not doing experiments. It's a communication device. Uh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> How many probes have I sent now? How could I forget scientific equipment? Mm. <laughs> Just, yeah. Why are you going to Moho? Not for science. Just fun. Oh, that's an expensive mistake. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Just lay into me in the comments all you want. Alright, so anyway, we finished the video putting some people on Minmus or whatever. Everyone makes mistakes, okay? Yeah, so we're completing this. He, uh, this Kerbal only wanted to orbit Minmus, but we have a mission to plant a flag on Minmus, so we're gonna do that. Um, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> oh my god. I, I just can't believe I was that stupid. I didn't even need to put the big scientific equipment on there. Oh, I shouldn't have told you guys and then just changed it in the same... I know, I wouldn't do that. But uh, yeah, that's great. Anyway, we land on Minmus. Uh, makes the Kerbal extra happy because they didn't even pay for this. We're going to plant the flag. We're going to do all that. We're going to discover that these rocks still aren't solid for... Various reasons. And we're also going to realize that I didn't have uh, rocks on for ages. Um, or scientific equipment on for right now. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you'll come back for next episode where I think we'll actually be getting to Drez. And we're going to be doing a few more interesting things. This was mostly space trucking and me being a fucking moron. Um, but yeah, anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this. And if you want to go check out a couple more videos, there is my latest episode of Spore, which I get very angry at the game because I don't know how to, how to do missions. And there is... Um, 
Of course, my latest devlog for the game I'm working on. It's super early, so don't be too judgmental. But, uh, yeah, I'd like to, you know, show off the, well, show the things I'm doing and working on. And I, I, I'm getting help from testers now. And I, I, I found my artists slash artists on, um, uh, through the video. So that is really useful. So if you want to check it out, it's, uh, it's you know, it's an insight into what I'm doing sometimes. But, yeah, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, and there is also links to my Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon in the description. But, yeah. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. I do hope next time I, I remember scientific equipment, and uh, I'll see you next time. <laughs>